2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. In this episode, we want to talk about things to look out for when buying your homestead land. So in this situation, we're going to talk about utility and utility right away, utility assessment. So let's say, for example, that you have a piece of land that you're really interested in and you're maybe real close to putting that money down on, uh, on that land to be your new homestead. Well, one thing you want to take into consideration is utility access. So what I'm talking about here, again, if you're going to be totally off grid, then that's a different story. So you may not, this may not be as important to you, but even if you're totally off grid or planning to be totally off grid, I would suggest doing this assessment because you may want to have backup plans or backup options if available. So what utilities are we talking about here? Well, where we are in West Virginia, the common ones of course are electric, phone, gas, and water. So four big ones there. So in our situation, I'm standing here on the front of our homestead. There's Cam's chickens hanging out. You can see the driveway behind us, so there's the county road. Well, this was the original, where I'm standing was the original house seat. So there was a house that used to sit right here. And uh, so when, when this property was, was first uh, developed, if you will, where the utilities were first brought in, this is as far as they need to bring them. So you can see back here, there's a gas meter. Well, that gas meter is the original position of, uh, of the gas meter when the house sit here. So that's the responsibility of the utility company is to manage that line to that meter. After that, it's not their responsibility. Well, you can see from here to where I'm standing, it's only about 30 or 40 feet, no big deal. But now, now you can see how far away our house is. So we had to put a lot of gas line in to be able to get gas up to that house. So there's a lot of additional expense we had in that. Again, when we talked to the gas company, the gas company said, you've got a meter, you're good to go. Well, I need gas not here, I need it up there. So we had to spend a lot of time digging trench, and then of course, up the side of the mountain that was all stone, we, uh, we had several thousand dollars invested in just getting the gas line up there. So what about electricity? Well, if you come over here, you see, the camera may not pick this up, but there's power lines coming from the county road coming to this power pole with this transformer. Well, that was the original power line. That was the original power drop. So the, the power to the house used to come off that transformer. Of course, just come across this area here and tie into the house. So again, no big deal. Not only did they have power to the house, but the line continued up to our wood shop. Now that, we built the workshop. Uh, there, when we first bought the property, this was all abandoned. There was an old trailer uh, mobile home site there so there wasn't anything built there but there was the power pole you see there and an old power drop so when i built the workshop uh, we used the existing power drop so we had this pole with the transformer and that pole so what happened when we put this driveway in we raised the elevation and of course we wanted power to the house so we raised the elevation well that didn't allow that power line to continue through to our workshop so they had to set a pole there well, they didn't like the fact that there was an old transformer here. And instead of updating that transformer, they said, well, we're going to set a new pole and put a new transformer on. So now I got two transformers. And they had to put this pole here to raise it high enough so we could drive underneath there and make sure that uh, obviously uh, uh, delivery trucks and anything like that didn't catch that power line and tear it down. So that was an expense there. So we had to have that pole set and the transformer. Well, you, you may not be able to see it, but through the trees there is actually our power drop. We wanted buried service to the house, but the power company said there's too much stone here uh, on the side of the mountain, so we can't do buried service. You have to get buried service started on this other side. So there's another pole setting there with buried service that starts and then runs all the way to the house. So we're talking thousands of dollars that I wasn't expecting. I knew I'd have some expense there, but thousands and thousands of dollars, probably about $8,000 that we had to spend just in getting power that was already on the property to where we wanted to have our house. So what about water? Well, water's kind of funny. We don't even have water that comes up this valley. Uh, it's about a half a mile down is where the water stops. So I knew, okay, I, you know, I'm not gonna be able to get water 
so I don't have to worry about water line. But as you can imagine what it would take if water line came to the original house seat here, what it would take to get water up to the house. We'd not only have to have the water line, but we'd have to have check valves, probably some booster pumps, those type of things to get water up there. Now, obviously, we invested money in putting a well, so that uh, offset our needs for water. But, you know, the thousands of dollars we spent on a well, you could have spent thousands of dollars in getting water line if indeed the water came here. So that wasn't an option for us. And then, of course, phone. We do have a landline. The phone lines around here are so prehistoric, we, we can hardly use them. They're, they're all worn out. Nobody wants to maintain uh, landlines. But you can see there is phone line. There's actually a phone line that runs to the workshop. Uh, but it's, like I said, it's so worn out that uh, half the time we use the landline, it doesn't work. So the takeaway from this, of course, is if you're going to look at a piece of land, if you're interested in saying, man, I really like this, and this would be the ideal place to build our house on our homestead, then if you're not going to be totally off grid, you need to look and see what's it going to take to get power here, to get water here, to get phone, uh, to get gas, natural gas, if you've got that option. And the power company will only set uh, poles uh, depending, on their, depending on the circumstance. They usually won't pay for additional poles. You have to pay for that. So that could be some serious out-of-pocket expense there. So if you really want to have certain utilities on your homestead to run to your house, like you really want to have electricity bad, you really want to have water bad, you really want to have gas bad, I guess that's better than having bad gas. Right, Kel? <laughs> then make sure you do this assessment. You may find the perfect piece of property. And you say, this is exactly where I want the house built. This is what I, I want to do it but make sure you take into consideration of the expenses to get utilities there. Again, if you're gonna be off grid, it may not be that big a deal, but I would strongly encourage you, even if you're off grid, to have some backups, maybe at least of power or natural gas, because generators, a lot of stuff can run off natural gas. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. That helps people find us. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash redtoolhousefarm. Take care, everybody.